This story takes place back in the summer of 2021. During that time, I had just recently gotten a new car. Before that, I had been driving an old 2004 Chevy Trailblazer, which if you don't know is an SUV. I didn't think that it would be worth that much, but I still decided to sell it on Craigslist. After all, that's where I had bought it years earlier, and I had taken good care of it for the most part. I took some pictures out in my driveway and then listed the car. It ran pretty well and was very reliable, so I knew that somebody would be interested. I listed it for $2,000 and waited. I wasn't in that much of a rush to sell it, and it took about two days before I got the first response to the ad. The response was someone asking if the car was still for sale. I said yes, and they texted back asking if they could take a look at it. We then arranged a meeting after the person got off work the following day. I asked for their name, and he said his name was Barry. He said that he got off of work at 8 p.m. I suggested that we meet in the parking lot of a nearby Walmart because it was a really big lot. It would also be in a public area because I didn't want a random person showing up at my house. Barry agreed, and the very next day I drove out to the Walmart, which was like five minutes away from my house. I got there early and looked around the parking lot. I told him that I was in the very back corner, and he really couldn't miss me. The parking lot was always empty in the back half or so. It was often used for truckers or sometimes RVs to park overnight. The first red flag happened before Barry even showed up. I should have driven away right then and there. He texted me saying that he was there and asking what my car looked like. I was thinking, seriously, you're the one interested in buying the car and you don't even remember what it looks like. I gave him a description, great as SUV in the back corner. He then replied saying that he saw me and was driving over. I looked around and watched a much newer looking car approach me. It looked to be a red Ford Focus that was only a few years old. He parked right next to me and I watched a man get out. He was younger looking, maybe 30, and had dark brown hair and black glasses. I got out of my car and walked over to him. We met out front of my car and shook hands. I told him some basic information on the car as he looked at it. Less than a minute in, he asked me if we could go for a test drive. I said yes, and Barry got into the driver's seat of my car, and I got into the passenger seat. I noticed that he was on his phone a lot in the short time since he had gotten out of his car. Something just seemed a little bit strange about this guy. When he started driving, I asked him if he knew this area and if he could drive on some roads close by. He said that he knew it well, and we left the Walmart and heated to a Quitter Area. Barry went down a road that I had only been on a couple of times. It was a somewhat quiet road with a speed limit of 35. There were some patches of woods here and there and some buildings that seemed to be industrial. During the drive, things were pretty quiet. I talked about the car for the first couple of minutes, but Barry didn't really respond or say anything back to me. I remember him looking at his phone once while driving, and I told him that he shouldn't do that. He was like, oh sorry, and then he put it away. I asked him how he thought the car was driving and if he liked it. He just said yes and that it was good. After maybe five minutes of driving, I was starting to think that we should head back. That's when Barry suddenly began slowing down. He then pulled off the road suddenly and into this really crappy looking parking lot. There were kind of woods on both sides leading into it, and the parking lot had tons of potholes and looked to be for a warehouse. When he got into the parking lot, he drove in a little ways and then stopped the car. I noticed that there was one other car in this parking lot. I thought at first, maybe Barry just wanted to turn around in there, but when he stopped the car, I was really confused. Barry then shut off the engine and took the key out of the ignition. Then he opened up his driver's door and started to get out. I was really confused and just watching him, wondering what was going on. As he was getting out, he then suddenly yelled at me to get out of the car. I looked to my right and saw three men getting out of the other vehicle that was also in the parking lot, and the three men were walking towards us. They were maybe like 50 chefti away. These men started walking at a fast pace, and Barry stepped out in front of my car and then waved at me to get out. I heard him yell at me to get out of the car again. I knew that I was in trouble at that point, and I didn't know what these guys wanted, but I realized something quickly. My car had two keys for it, and I had brought the spare just in case I would have sold it that night. It was in my pocket. 
After Barry saw that I was not getting out of the car, he started walking over to my passenger's door. I figured that he was going to try to force me out. Meanwhile, the other three men were now only about 20 FT away. I reached in my pocket and felt on the key for the lock button for the doors. I pushed it, and when Barry got closer, I moved over into the driver's seat of the car. He reached the door and tried opening it, but it was locked. In that moment, I quickly put my spare key into the ignition and started the engine. Barry had the other key still and would be able to unlock it if he got it. When the car started, I saw him reaching into his pocket and saw the other man start running. As soon as the car was started up though, I put it into drive and slammed my foot on the gas. The car jerked away from everyone and they gave chase on foot for a short time before I sped away. I then made a quick U-turn as the men were now running for their vehicle. I drove out of that pothole-filled parking lot as fast as I could and then back onto the road. I took the very first turn that I saw from that road and the men were not able to reach me in their car on time. I didn't see them behind me and was able to get away. I went straight back to my house and when I made it back home, called the police and reported the whole thing. I told them about the car at Walmart that Barry had left and gave as much information as I could. I later found out that the car Barry used to get to Walmart was found still there and came back as stolen. I'm not sure if Barry and those other guys were ever found. I know that I'm just really glad that I had the spare key with me and was able to get away from them. Last month I decided to sell my big TV with the TV stand on Craigslist. I got a new TV that's slightly larger and it's mounted on the wall. The old TV is in a large stand and I just kind of had it in the dining room. My wife had been asking me to get rid of it, but I thought that I could get some money for it, so I put it up on Craigslist for a few days. I got no interest though. I was seriously considering lowering the price on it, because to be honest, it wasn't that great of a deal. But then I got some interest. A man reached out and told me that he might want to buy it. He asked if he could see it. I told him only if he was serious about it, and he said that he was. I gave him my address, and we arranged for him to come and look at it the next night, at 7 Wars p.m. I live in an average-sized two-story home that's just me and my wife. Because the TV stand and the TV were kind of bulky, I really didn't feel like lugging it into my car to drive it to some local parking lot. I figured it wasn't a big deal that I was giving my address to him. The next night at 7 to Gal p.m., I waited for the guy to show up. After 30 minutes went by, I sent him a text asking him if he was still coming. He responded saying yes, he was and he was on his way. I kept waiting. By the time he got to my house, it was 8 cow and dark outside. When I saw his car, I was disappointed. He arrived in a small little four-door sedan, and there was no way that the TV or the stand would fit inside of it. I watched the car drive slowly in front of our house, but then the car passed by and I thought for a moment maybe it wasn't him, or maybe he was confused on the address. But he later parked a ways down, almost out of my sight. I wasn't sure why he parked so far away, but whatever. The guy then walked up, and I met him at the front step. He was wearing a hooded sweatshirt with the hood up, and he appeared to be in his twenties. I invited him in and showed him the TV and stand. They weren't too far away from the door at all. I asked the guy if he wanted to buy it, the guy just stood there and looked at it for a few seconds. Then he said that he wanted to buy it, but he didn't get paid until Friday and would have to wait until then. I was pretty annoyed by this. I started walking the guy to the door, kind of leading him out. I asked the guy why he would come over today if he wouldn't be able to buy it. The man said that he just wanted to see it. He then walked out my front door and back outside. We said bye to each other, and then I shut the door. During this whole meeting, my wife had been upstairs in our bedroom. I sat down on the living room couch and turned on my larger mounted TV. My wife then came downstairs and asked me why the guy had gone into our backyard. I was like, what are you talking about? She told me that she had been upstairs and saw out the window when the guy left. He walked straight around our house and into the backyard. I got up and went to the front window and looked out. I just barely saw within my vision the car down the street. It was still there. I didn't know why the guy would be back there, and I told my wife that. 
Then I went around to the back windows and looked out of them. At first I didn't see anything. I asked my wife where in the backyard he had gone, and she told me that he had disappeared behind a bush. I kept looking through the windows, and then I turned on a light. I then leaned to the side and looked out one of the windows towards the bushing. I just barely saw the guy crouch down, hiding. I could only see part of him, but that was enough. I cracked open the window just a tiny bit and yelled out that if he didn't leave now, I was going to call the police. Just seconds later, the guy got up and sprinted away. I went to the front of the house and looked out the window, and my wife and I watched the guy sprint all the way to his car, and then he drove off. After that, I took the listing off of Craigslist. I also reported the incident. I regret giving that guy my address, and I should have known better. I'm glad my wife saw him go behind our house because who knows what his plans were. When I was in college, like most people, I didn't have a whole lot of money. During the summertime, I would work a job, and at college, I did have an on-campus job as well, but I didn't get that many hours or that much money for it. I didn't have the time for a normal or even part-time job while I was at school. I had quite a bit of homework and school was difficult for me, so I would spend a lot of extra time studying. But during my junior year, I really wanted some more money. I didn't have the time for a normal or even part-time job while I was at school. I had quite a bit of homework and school was difficult for me, so I would spend a lot of extra time studying. But during my junior year, I really wanted some more money. I decided to go on Craigslist and look for some fast jobs that I could do. I went on one day and looked under the general labor section. These would be good jobs for me because I was a pretty fit 21-year-old guy. Any kind of job like yard work or something is what I was hoping for. Soon I saw an ad that simply said, Yard Cleanup. This was just what I was hoping for, and I clicked on it. There weren't many details at all, though. It just said, Need someone to clean up my yard. Will take a couple of hours. Pay a hundred dollars. The ad had only been posted an hour earlier, and I responded. Soon the person got back to me, and I agreed to the job. They asked me if I could come Friday night, and I asked the time. They said 9 Ogals PM. This was kind of strange to me. I would expect to be doing yard work during the daytime. I should have questioned them and asked why so late, but I didn't. I was just afraid if I did, they would get mad and find somebody else, and I really wanted the money. Plus, I was free at that time, and it's not like I had clashed the next morning or anything. I agreed to it, and they gave me the address. On Friday night, I put the address in my phone and drove to the location. I had never been to that area before, and it was almost 20 minutes away. The location was a house with a pretty decent-sized yard. It was in a residential neighborhood, but I couldn't tell a whole lot about the area because it was nighttime and really dark. There were only a couple of dimly lit street lamps around. I let the person know that I was there, texting them, and then I got out of my car. I was about five minutes early and started walking up to the house. It was a two-story house that looked pretty average to me. There were some overgrown bushes in the yard as well as leaves and such. I walked up to the front door and rang the doorbell. All of the lights in the house appeared to be off, which was kind of strange. About a minute went by, and nobody came to the door. Then I knocked. Maybe their doorbell was broken or something. After knocking, I still heard nothing. I waited and then double-checked on my phone that I was at the correct address. I was. Nobody responded to my text either. I knocked one more time. Still, no one came to the door. But then I heard something out in the yard. It sounded like footsteps. And they were to my right, coming from almost the side of the house. I looked over, but it was very dark and there was also a tree in the way of my view, so I couldn't see anything. I took a couple of steps back to look. The footsteps were a ways away, but clearly in the yard of the property that I was at. When I moved back, the footsteps stopped. I called out, asking if somebody was there. I thought maybe it was the homeowner, but I didn't get a response. I was starting to feel kind of creeped out by this situation. Then I heard the footsteps again. I couldn't take it anymore, and I started walking away. I didn't look behind me and I walked all the way to my car. I got inside and locked the doors. I looked out to the yard and didn't see anyone. 
Then I checked my phone for the last time to see if there was a response yet. Still nothing. Then I left. I started driving back to my college apartment. But when I was still on that quiet street, I saw a car appear behind me. I hadn't seen exactly where it came from, but it looked like it might have actually come out of the driveway to the house that I was at. The car followed me off that street and onto the next one. When I got back on the highway to go back to campus, the car did as well. It stayed with me when I took the exit too. By then, I was getting really suspicious. I kept driving though. When I got about a mile from campus, the car finally stopped following me. It took a left when I took a right. I was able to make it back, but after that, I decided not to go on Craigslist anymore. I don't know if the car that followed me had anything to do with it or not. I feel like it did, but I don't have any proof. What I do know is that the experience was very strange. The person never contacted me at all after that, and I still don't know who was walking behind the tree. They definitely heard me when I called out to them, but didn't respond. I'm glad that I left when I did. Before I tell you this story, I want to point out that I was much younger and less mature than I am now. Since this experience, I've learned a lot. At this time, I was 20 years old and had just recently moved out on my own and was living in an apartment. I had a job and had just enough money saved up to get a car. My budget was low and I knew that the only car I would likely be able to buy was an older vehicle with a lot of miles. As long as it was durable and ran well, I didn't care though. I was just happy to be able to purchase my own car. I lived close enough to the city that I could take buses places, but having a car is much more convenient. I started looking on Craigslist for a car and set my budget. After a few days of looking, I found one that I thought would be really good. The price was reasonable, the car looked to be in good shape, and the listing was very recent. I reached out to the seller and was contacted. He seemed friendly at first, telling me that his name was Mark. I decided that I probably wanted to buy this car, but I should go look at it and maybe test drive it first. Mark said that I could see it that very night or the next one. I decided for the next night, and I asked Mark if there was a public location nearby that we could meet at. Mark said no, and that I had to go to his house. I foolishly agreed. To be honest with you, I wanted to meet in a public place, not because I was suspicious of him, but because I could only take buses and public transportation places. I would have to walk farther to go to his house rather than just take a bus stop to a shopping center. He also told me to come later at night. I think it was like 8 calm or 9 calm p.m. Still, I really wanted the car, so I went. I took the bus to his general neighborhood and then had to walk like four blocks to get to his house. When I got close, I texted him. However, Mark did not immediately get back to me. Soon I made it to his address. He had a pretty typical looking house in a neighborhood with lots of other similar looking houses. I saw the car sitting in the driveway by his garage. I walked up to his front door and knocked, then I waited. He didn't answer the door right away, but he did text me. I got a notification on my phone shortly after knocking. When I looked at it, he said, Come on inside. I was confused as to why he wanted me to come inside of his house. The car was outside, and I know that I shouldn't have, but I actually did. I opened the door slowly and announced that I was there and said hi, but Mark didn't respond to me. The house looked very typical in seed, and I was in the living room, but I didn't see or hear Mark anywhere. I stood there by the door just a few feet in, then suddenly I heard a voice. It was Mark. He said, Come on in over here. His voice was coming from a ways into the house and around a corner, it seemed. I couldn't see him at all. I started walking into the house to where I had heard his voice. Just a few steps in, though, and suddenly all of the lights went out. It became pitch black, and I couldn't see a thing. When this happened, I just wanted to get out of there. I turned around and tried heading for the door, but it was so dark that I had no clue if I was heading in the right direction. Meanwhile, I started to hear footsteps quickly approaching from behind. I sped up, running into a wall, and then tried feeling my way to the door. But just moments later, the footsteps reached me, and I felt somebody grabbing for me. They got part of my left arm, and then I sprinted forward and away from them. I got lucky and ran into the door, which I quickly felt around for the handle, 
and then opened it. Even though it was dark out, I could finally see much better. I sprinted out from the house and was not followed outside. Then I ran away down the street and didn't stop until I had made it back to the bus stop. I kept a careful eye out as I waited for the next bus, but I didn't see the guy. Eventually, I was able to catch a bus home. When I got back home, I looked back on Craigslist and the ad was taken down. Then I called the police non-emergency line and reported the incident. Looking back at that experience, I know that I should not have entered the house. I also probably should not have met the guy at his house either. I did end up finding a car not too long after, which I did buy through Craigslist. I still use Craigslist, but I'm much more careful, and I'm sure to meet the person in public and not go to other people's homes.